Monte Pulciano with the owner of Salchetto Winery, Michele Manelli. Okay, we are in Tuscany, the region of Tuscany, which is in the province of Siena, which is in the town of Monte Pulciano. Okay, we're going to talk about Monte Pulciano a little bit later, but right now I just want to introduce Michele. He's uh, received a lot of awards about his wine, a lot of highly rated wines, as well as he's also received a lot of awards regarding his sustainability. So, Michele, can you tell me, I know that I read on your website that you reuse all your water. Uh, in, in general, we have uh, had uh, an approach to sustainability more than 10 years ago uh, that really transformed uh, the, the, the business. Uh, and, and because it, it, it got inside our, our attitude and our organization. So oh, 15 years ago, more or less, when we started this new paradigm of, of, of how to run a business, we, for example, uh, drafted our seller to be energy independent. We organized our packaging to follow a target of carbon footprint reduction. Uh, we have uh, worked on biodiversity, on water, uh, saving and, and recycling. It's, a, it's, a, it's, you know, a, as I said, the attitude. You, you have to review continuously everything you're doing mm -hmm. to try to meet uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, planetary war target like carbon reduction for climate or biodiversity. In your business, impact, so you have to do something. Exactly. Problem. Can you tell me a couple of examples? Well, uh, the, the, the most uh, important examples are uh, related to the project. The first one that we have uh, achieved uh, were regarding energy savings. Consider that uh, this year, this is the 2021 vintage, and it is the 10th vintage that we run in an, in a, in an energy independent cellar, thanks, for example, to natural lighting instead of electrical one, to the uh, transformation of all the waste of biomass of the winery into energy, uh, to geothermal exchange underground and uh, vineyard and parking lot to create cool, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, cooling uh, uh, and conditioning energy. It's a, it, it has been a, a great achievement to, to create this system that uh, allow us to save energy and, and make renewables. Or another fact, our bottle, it's the lightest bottle in the market. It's, a, it's a really incredibly how it can save us uh, in terms of, uh, of footprint, of carbon footprint in this case for production and transportation all, the, all, all around the globe. Yes, I actually did a project in school. Uh, I'm a graduate of the WSET diploma program, which is one level below Master of Wine. And I did a research project on uh, carbon footprint glass bottles. So glass bottles are tremendously heavy and for you to be able to make them a little bit lighter is a savings for sure because we don't really recycle the glass bottles. Uh, it's impossible considering right. the distribution of, exactly. uh, and the differences in between bottles. Okay. It is good to do it but of course also to be conscious of the problem to try to reduce it as we did for example with the light bottle and at the same time to assume as a consumer the responsibility to say okay today I'm drinking a good bottle of Sangiovese in San Francisco but tomorrow I will have to go to work uh, with my bicycle instead of the car. Right, right. So how do you reuse the water? You're cleaning the tanks, they have to clean the tanks out to keep them clean. So you probably save that water and reuse that on other, how do you, can you give me a very the, common example well, of how you would save that water? It is uh, actually an organization pretty much industrialized in the sense that we have set up a, 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 an important depuration plant in the winery that uh, uh, then uh, that cleans and, and, and create and make this this water that has been used for cleaning a vat drinkable you know? and, 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 and this water then is driven rather directly to the winery again for new use, uh, okay. direct circularity or stored in a, in a lake that is just dedicated to it, where we can then pick the water to, for example, uh, for watering the vertical garden or for uh, okay. using the, in the okay. farming, because uh, okay. we, do, we don't irrigate, but we need water, for example, for other operation. Uh, okay. okay, so basically you're, t you're reusing the water and saving it in a separate reservoir Storing. for use in some other way, the, some other practical Yeah, with way. water, the storage is, is a good opportunity because it, it's easier to store. You know, All righty, so let's go on to the next fun thing. Thank you. 
Okay, hello again. We are back with this curbezolo tree, which we don't have in the United States, but this is a gorgeous tree, very rare and high in vitamins, and Michele Manelli, the owner of Salchetto, has introduced me to this tree and has picked me a beautiful red fruit, which I'm going to try right now. Let's see how it, how it uh, I will do it with you, so we are okay. together. In okay, the, Uno, due, due tre. tre. things that he does that Italians in general I notice will often do is have these incredible plants along with their vineyards. Speaking of vineyards, um, you basically grow, if you don't know really, the Montepulciano is not to be confused please with Montepulciano d'Abruzzo. We are in Montepulciano Vino Nobile means noble wine of Montepulciano. It's made with Cuniolo Gentile, which is a clone of Sangiovese. So let me clarify the definition for clone. When we think of a clone, uh, if you clone a goat, you get the exact same replica of the goat genetically. However, when we have a clone in the wine industry, such as Pugnolo, Pugnolo Gentile, uh, it has been, it's slightly altered genetically, and I don't want to say that it's been modified genetically. But it evolves. That's right, it evolves, it changes, it's ever so slightly different. Can you tell me what the main difference would be between uh, Sangiovese and Cugnello Gentile? The difference is uh, simply, uh, uh, ideally, in the, in the name, the nickname that is given to each area, Cugnolo, Brunello also uses the Grosso Montecino, etc., which uh, uh, wants to underline the uniqueness of uh, how this varietal uh, uh, is uh, interpreted in the term. It's not the case that Sangiovese has uh, more than 140 that have been identified. 100, 140 different clones Sangiovese has. Yeah. And, so. uh, but in Montepulciano, just like in Toscana, we can use any of them, but any of them, when they will be planted in Montepulciano, they will, uh, they will, uh, they will uh, assume a specific character compared to... Correct. Yeah. It will take on the terroir of the, the, the land and the climate and the wind and everything that Montepulciano has to offer. Okay, just going back to Montepulciano, the grape variety again is Pugnello Gentile, but not to be confused with the Montepulciano grape variety in Abruzzo. Okay, so we all have that clear now, right? As far as the uh, grape varieties go, Canaiolo and Mamolo. Mamolo means violet, yeah. correct? Okay. And these grape varieties were traditionally used for, what, a couple hundred years in Toscana? It's a classic variety that would be blended with Chianti. Uh, so, however, Merlot is something that is considered a, a foreign grape, a French grape, and is not indigenous to Italy, and that is part of the Super Tuscan phenomenon. The Super Tuscan phenomenon, and you make a Super Tuscan, I believe, or you make a blend? No, we actually, no? Our, our, let's say, top wines are uh, all uh, in within the Vino Nobile. Okay. We have so, not, uh, we, have, we, we do uh, some, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a Super Tuscan, it's Medium Tuscan, no, I'm joking. but uh, we do some, uh, some, uh, Toscana, red, rosato, bianco, in a Some blends, curious way. Right, it's uh, right. so totally no additive or no so far. Right. But right. Uh, in the uh, most uh, important expression of uh, quality and density, deepness, we, we go for Sangiovese 100% okay. and Vino Nobile. Okay. It was a choice to 
to stay more close to, to, to a territorial idea and right. express it more directly. Okay, okay. So this is a very traditional vineyard making excellent wine. Uh, what we have here also is, um, we're talking about, uh, Michele makes organic wines and they are all unfiltered, is that correct? Uh, the, uh, the unfiltered uh, are only the white and let's say, uh, solo grapes uh, okay. project. Okay. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, we do, uh, we make uh, not, uh, of course, uh, I don't want to get too technical, but the, 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 the idea of filtering is, is, a, is a concept that needs to be also clarified among the wine in general, because uh, we, if, you, if we consider uh, safety filtering, take off the risk of a piece of glass into the bottom of filtering. This is... Uh, so you're not piece. fining then? But we're not fining. Oh, okay. uh, we're not. Uh, we're okay. not going into uh, uh, okay. like micron level okay. filtering to... to okay. To, you know, so I can bio. explain that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So basically he's saying he doesn't fine it. What fining means is it's a very, very intense, more advanced method of filtering. They have to filter a little bit because he doesn't want anybody to drink glass or or wood chips or anything. But what that does is I'm a proponent of of non-fining wines because there's a theory that if you don't find the wines, in other words, massively filter the wines, then the wines retain a sense of character, those little microscopic particles that improve uh, the flavor of the wine, allow it to develop more character, more uniqueness than if you had filtered out those little microscopic particles. Those mi microscopic particles might make your wine beautifully bright and clear, uh, as many people like them, but you're detracting from the wine a little bit. So whenever possible, personally, I try to go for the unfiltered wines or the non-fined wines, okay? So let's move on to the next fun process. Thank you. Hi, this is Mark to Mark Kitty Candle, and I'm back with Miguel Manelli. And I just wanted to show you all these silos because a lot of people have the impression, uh, if they've never visited wineries, that a winery is made of old wooden vats and big round barrels and dirt floors. That was many, many years ago. Calcetto makes Vino Nobile, they drain juice from the bottom of the tank and gently pump the juice over the top of the cap to extract tannins and pigments from the must. We have each one of these in front of each silo and that's a different batch of wine being produced with the indigenous yeast, those exact yeast from those exact grapes in a specific uh, plot in the vineyard. And that's going to give character to each wine. That's right, that's what makes it all unique. Uh, we use both French and American. 
to use the French oaks uh, for Nobile, for the Nobile wine, and it's high for reserve, and uh, the American oak for, for our Chianti. Okay, they use American oak for Chianti. That's interesting. This will stay in these to know for how many years? Uh, the, okay, the Chianti is a very quick touch, so just a few months. But in general, our, our Nobile wines that are the age, the wines stay for two years in wood, uh, between the large casks that we have already seen mm -hmm. and uh, those uh, smaller uh, So they do a mix of, of the two types of woods mm -hmm. uh, with two different experiences in, and they stay uh, uh, never more than 24 months or two years. Okay, now how old are these to know that we're uh, looking at right here? Pretty, pretty old. Uh, we have a uh, rotation of about 20%, uh, uh, so they can be uh, up to five or six years. Okay, so what that means is that we're not going to have pronounced flavors of, of oak or vanilla. These wines are not going to be intensely flavored. We've done that on purpose because we want the flavor of Chianti, we want the the flavor of Vino Nobile. We don't want this to taste like an American wine, a California wine, however good that is. This is a totally different style of wine. So we have the old oak, which will impart just a hint of the flavor and will enable the wine to breathe through the, the pores of the oak, thereby aging it and developing it and reducing the harshness of it. So again, this is just a hint of oak. So let's go from here and we'll go out into the vineyard. Today we are here in Tuscany at Salchetto Vineyard and we're taking a photograph of this young man. Come si chiama? Federico. Federico, of course, a beautiful name. And we're so lucky to be here because usually tourists are not let in at this time of the year. It's very, very busy. It's crucial time, the harvest. The grapes have to be just so. So I'm very special and they allowed me to come in. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on how quickly he's cutting. He can do this row in no time at all. Okay. Per piacere, metti di là. Metto dentro? Sì, un po'. Uno, uno. Un pezzo. Ah, perfetto. Okay. This is Sangiovese grapes. And let me taste this and see if it's any good. Ooh, it's like sugar. Now the other thing is, when we pick grapes, we need to know not only how ripe they are in terms of sweetness, but we need to understand their phenolic ripeness. So what's important here, I'm going to crush this grape. These are perfect. These are phenolically ripe. If you can see this, the seeds are completely brown. Now we go for the real glass of wine. Sangiovese grapes, really, really sweet. We're going to have a little bit of wine. Okay. I have to make sure this is very, it's going to be good. Okay, salute. Salute. Non sono sicura. Federico? Si. Vorresti provare? Okay. Allora. E poi non lavora più di me. Cin cin. Cin cin. Cin cin. Mm. <laughs> he agrees it's pretty good. Okay, thank you. Next we're going to go and taste all the wine. Chin chin. You'll see how the grapes are dumped from the truck onto the conveyor belt. <clears throat> In lower quality vineyards or industrial level vineyards, they often use mechanical harvesting equipment where a long rod is banged against the vine to make grapes fall into containers. So you'll get bits and pieces of twig, bark, and maybe some soil. And then all of that goes into your wine because the grapes are not carefully sorted. It's true that most wine is filtered in the end, but this has an impact on the wine quality and purity. Most wines in the $10 to $15 range are harvested by this method.